I'm moving my hands around a lot. Maybe it's because my legs are so calm. <laughs> I'm back and today I am overly excited. I mean, when am I not really? But the point is I am because it's craft day and that makes me happy. Today we're gonna be making weighted lap pads and before you go saying that I'm late to the game and that these have been done to death because they're all over Pinterest and YouTube and Instructable and wherever else in the world that they might be hiding on the internet, mine, is different, hopefully. I mean, like I made it up in my head and I haven't seen anything like it, so I'm going based on that, but I think it's new and different, so yeah. <laughs> now, if you've never heard of a weighted lap pad or blanket, I mean, you must be living under a rock, but if you haven't, basically weighted items such as the lap pads or blankets can provide a sense of grounding and relief for somebody who might suffer from anxiety, depression, ASD, sensory processing disorder, or a million other things, honestly. Think of it this way. If a nice tight hug can help calm you, then you may be somebody who could find relief in a weighted item. And due to that fact alone, they've become very popular. Now, in order to come up with my own new method, Method, there had to be a reason and honestly it's just that I tried different tutorials in the past whether from YouTube or Pinterest and halfway through the projects I always find that it's not exactly what I was searching for. The majority of the easy tutorials require Ziploc bags and duct tape and rice or sand or dry beans or polyfill beads stuff like that and those result in a very stiff thick hard feeling thing that you would never want to sleep under or in the case of the pillow it was stiff and it didn't curve around my legs. Another big problem that I have is with the different types Types of weights used. There are a whole bunch, many of which I've already mentioned, but for the most part, I couldn't force myself to use the rice or the beans or any of those food methods because it's wasteful. And I am just not a fan of using food for crafting in any way. And I have nothing against anybody else who wants to. For me, it's a no-go. Another good reason is if it collects any moisture or gets damp in any way, the beans or the rice or whatever you've used can mold and that's just a whole other slew of problems. And let's not even think about the fact that they could just collect bugs. Basically, it's not washable and using food items is just more problems than they're worth, so that's not on my list. Another popular material that gets used a lot are little polyfill beads, or they might have different names wherever you are, and you can buy these in stores, but they're pretty expensive and you don't get that much, so the best bet is to order them online, which means you have to have patience, which I don't. Also, I'm just not a fan of paying for plastic when there's already way too much plastic everywhere. Now, the good thing about the polyfill beads, also glass beads, which I might as well just lump together because they're very similar, is that technically once you've made your little pouches, if you've done it all correct and you're a good seamstress, you could potentially wash these and let them air dry and such. But I'm not a good seamstress. <laughs> And if you don't know how to double stitch or whatever those terms are and you get yourself a little hole Your super expensive beads that you waited forever for is now a super expensive mess. So once again, that's a no-go for me Another option is to use metal washers and I think some people said pennies one that might get way too heavy way too quickly And there is a very specific ratio of weight to person that you need to follow in order to not harm your body And two if you don't exactly have a ton of metal washers kicking around You're gonna have to buy those and then once again that becomes expensive also those will wear away at your fabric over time, creating thinner spots or holes or even start to rust them. And also, once again, not washable. So another no. Another that I've started seeing is using fabrics or other blankets as weights, which I think is awesome, especially if you have hoarding problems like I do and just have stacks of blankets all over the place. I've seen people creating long cylinders and like rolling up old towels and stuff and sticking them in, which is great, but also makes a lumpy product. So if you're okay with that, then that's fantastic. But once again, Jen doesn't sew. So my solution to this and what I have done in the past is to take some heavy blankets, layer them on top of each other and slide it into a duvet. That works very well, but if you pick it up the wrong way, then everything sloshes to one side. So you gotta pick and choose your battles here. So long story short, I can't sew. I don't wanna spend extra money that I don't have to. I wanna reuse items from around my house if possible. And I want an easy project that doesn't leave me with a stiff duct tape center. So I made a no sew, no glue, no duct tape, no Ziploc bag, no food, no metal, no poly beads, easy to assemble and disassemble, insert for lap pads and potentially blankets. I haven't tried it yet. And the best part is you can find all the materials you need at the dollar store for under $10 per panel. I'm going by panel. And if you have some of the stuff at home already, then it's gonna cost you even less. So the first thing you're gonna need today, and it's very, very important, is polyester microfiber cloths. The next item you're gonna need is Velcro. And the last thing we'll need are glass beads. And you get quite a good amount for $1.25. And they have a decent weight to them too. Woo! -hoo! 
Ooh, all right, let's go. Underneath this pink blanket, which is just one of the few I have kicking around in my stash, is a green microfiber square. This right here is my actual DIY, and the blanket is used to wrap around it and provide a little bit of cushion between this and whatever we choose to put our weighted insert in. This is my actual weighted item, and it does have rocks inside. It's pretty heavy, it's pretty great and it collects a lot of fuzz. This is one of the materials that a lot of people don't like the feeling of. Somehow, it's not bothering me today, probably because I have lotion on my hands, but it is essential in order to make my DIY work. So if you wanna test this out, but don't like the feel of the microfiber cloths, then I suggest wearing gloves. Oh, I don't like that this is not straight. Hold on. It's getting more crooked as I try to fix it. I'm sorry if it's bothering you. We have to go with it because this will take forever to fix. I made some pretty bold claims earlier about it being no sew and no glue, easy to assemble and easy to take apart. So I'm about to show you that. And before I do, I will point out that I used a different type of rock in here because I like the smooth black river rocks. Just give them a wash first. But anyways, ta-da. Oh, I messed it up by showing it to you guys. Just imagine that these were all in rows, okay? So essentially what I've done is used Velcro to line and create columns within my microfiber cloths. I only put the scratchy side of the Velcro down because it definitely holds to the cloth itself, which I showed you by being able to lift it up, but you could definitely use both sides if you want to. It literally does not matter. The only thing that I'm going to change today when recreating this is instead of just having columns, I'm going to add extra pieces to turn them into little rectangles. That way they don't move around as much because while this does work, I have noticed that if you lift it, they do tend to all fall down. And if I had little barriers, then they'd sort of stay in their little pods. But this is different than if they were in Ziploc bags separated by duct tape, because it doesn't create a stiff, hard end result. And once you close it up, the microfiber cloth will restick itself to the Velcro in between, so you can feel the columns of the rocks. But as long as you're not using sharp, jagged ones, hence why we have these, you should be completely fine. And also by creating the little rectangles this time, we'll limit the sound that the rocks will make by banging into each other. But first, we'll need a clean surface. And here we go. Now, it literally does not matter what type of microfiber cloth you get. I could start with this straight up blue one if I wanted, or I could use this really pretty one that came with it as well. But but if you plan on putting this insert inside something else, then it really won't matter what the pattern is. So unless you like the feeling of microfiber and want to see the pattern, then you might as well save that for another use and use the straight up solid color one. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the tag. Pretty simple. And I just want to quickly see what this is going to look like if I fold it in half. It's not too bad. This is still a really good lap size. However, I think if I were to attempt making the blanket using this method, I would leave it big like this and then just put another on top and then make a few panels like that. But we'll have to test that another day. First things first, get your Velcro out. Now, like I pointed out, I chose to use just the scratchy side, mostly because I'm too lazy to do everything times two, but also because it sticks to itself. Oh crud, there it goes. Now, if you aren't a fan of having removable Velcro, you can buy Velcro without a sticky back and you can just attach everything with stitching and then it's like super permanent, but I'm not doing that. The self-adhesive one works just fine for me. So I'm doing things a little differently today since I'm not gonna be using two cloths. I'm only gonna attach the Velcro to one side of this larger one. Now, in order to find my middle, I'm just gonna fold that in half that way. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna cut my Velcro in half over here where it's not gonna stick to my cloth. Now I'm just gonna stick it along the edge and then repeat for the sides. Now I'm just gonna continue on in the exact same way, making columns and then adding some spacers so that it turns them into rectangles. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, it does get a little fiddly when you're working with the Velcro because it likes to fold back in on itself, which means it might stick to your cloth. It's not really gonna affect it too much. It just kind of makes it look wonky. Now I'm just gonna add random little rows and I'm gonna sort of stagger them out a bit. I don't know why, but I'm going to. Also, don't worry too much if these little lines don't meet up with the bigger Velcro. It's just to add a bit of protection and it's gonna stick to the microfiber cloth anyways. No one's gonna see what you've done on the inside. Wow, after all that hard, exhausting work, we are done. Now all I have to do, because I used one piece instead of two cloths, is fold this side out and just put some rocks in the little sections. Just make sure not to cover the Velcro. These do tend to add quite a bit of weight. Just make sure whatever insert you decide to make for whomever it's intended is a good amount of weight for their body. And there's a bunch of different websites online that will explain to you how it's done. I'm not gonna pretend to know everything about them because I don't wanna give false information. So you can look that up yourself. 
Now the one that I made already didn't actually make very much noise, but if you focused enough, you could hear it a little. I'm interested to see if by separating this, we can eliminate that sound entirely. Look how much we've covered, and that was just the first bag. There we go, we are done. And look how many glass beads we have left from the second bag. Now all I have to do is flip over the other side of the towel. I recommend going very slowly from the top and pushing down on the Velcro as you go. This in itself is its own sensory experience. I've pushed down on all the sections of Velcro. Now's the time to see if it worked. Ready? Oh my gosh, it did. Is anything falling out? No, they're just staying in their little sections. This is awesome. They still make noise, but whatever. What are you gonna do? Point is, it totally worked. No sewing, no gluing, and if you're not making a video like me, it will take you no time at all to complete this project. This is technically done. You could literally put it on your lap and call it a day. It would provide weight, and if you don't mind the feeling, then it is pretty soft. But if you'd like to have it be a presentable item in your home that kind of just blends in until you're ready to use it, or you want to gift it to somebody, then I have a few cost-effective suggestions for you where you would use this as the insert and all of them will require a piece of spare blanket, or if you have any other extra fabrics around your home. And nothing special is happening here, just gonna wrap it because it's gonna add a little extra soft comfort. It's like a pink little envelope of weighted love. Now if you're happy with this level of cushioning and whatever blanket you used is nice enough to leave it as such, you could add some buttons or snaps or Velcro to the side and keep it just as is, or you could take it a step further and stick it inside an old pillowcase, or if you have shirts that no longer fit someone in your family, or you bought it extra large like I did on purpose to turn it into a cushion, you can flip your t-shirt inside out and cut off the collar and sleeves and then just stitch along the top. I did say no sew, but to be fair, I made this like a year ago, okay? And there you go. You have a really long pillowcase, but since it's vertical, I use this for cushions. But today, I'll put the insert in. And now, fold in the rest, which just provides even more soft cushion. Okay, so the insert that I just made is a bit small for this one, but I think you know where I'm going with this. If you've never tried this before, this is a really excellent use for old t-shirts that you just can't part with. Like maybe it's from an old concert or even just something you want to keep from your children. It's just a really nice way to reuse something and keep it forever. Now I have a Sailor Moon weighted lap pad. And yes, this one is slightly too big, but I could easily fix that by making a bigger insert. Moving on to the next method. If you don't mind spending a bit more and you wanted to get a little fancier, you could get yourself a flippy sequin cushion cover, which is pretty easy to use. You open a zipper and stick your insert inside. I got this one at the dollar store for four dollars because my dollar store sucks, but you might be able to find them at the Dollar Tree. I honestly don't know, but they are an option. You can also pick up laptop covers and make a travel size weighted lap pad. These are pretty simple to use. Stick your insert inside the cushion cover. And if you want it to be thicker than this, add some extra fabric, or if you have stuffing kicking around like I do, then you can fill it with that. And personally, I think I will add some stuffing because that's just a little too thin and I can leave this one on the couch and it will look like a regular cushion with a hidden purpose. Zip it up. And just like that, we have a fancy weighted lap pillow. See, pillows. Ta-da! Moving on. And lastly, we're gonna convert this Pillow Pal Bumblebee into our weighted lap pad cover. If you've never seen these before, they're pretty cool because you can fold them in half to create a stuffed animal or it can lie out flat, which is perfect for resting on a lap which is why I have two, one that you can't see. It's a ladybug. And if you don't have one of these but are interested in them, I see them a lot at the thrift stores and I picked these up for about $3 each. So if you go that route, just make sure you wash it and let it dry completely to get rid of any germs or extra little bits that might be coming along to your home. This method of pillow disguise is pretty simple. We're just gonna cut off the tags. Next, we're gonna use a seam ripper to create an opening along the stitch line where the top is connected to the bottom of our pillow pal. And it only has to be big enough to be able to actually insert our weighted insert. This is hard to do, he's so fluffy. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I'm body shaming a pillow. He's so puffy, cause I put him in the dryer. But we're getting somewhere. Here we go, I've created the opening and it's definitely big enough to fit my insert in. But before I cut off these strings, I'm just gonna take the two pieces that are there and tie them in a knot, just so that it doesn't continue to unravel, I guess. And then I'll just cut off the excess and I've already done it to this side. And now what I'm gonna do is take out half the stuffing. But make sure you save it because you could totally use this for other projects. 
I feel like that's enough. And now we have to steal our insert from this pillow and add it to our B because I forgot to take it out. But look how easy it is to switch everything up. And just like that, we have a weighted B and it's super cute. The only thing I would have to do now is add some Velcro, snaps, buttons, or a zipper so that this doesn't stay open all the time. Time for a quick recap, but it's not gonna be super long because everything that I'm holding up is making static in my microphone. So here is my pillow. Ooh, it's very heavy. <laughs> Put that down. Ooh. And on my lap, I am using the B at the moment. I'm gonna hold it out way in front. And I'm sorry if it's statics, but there he is. I'm gonna quickly check to make sure I can turn it back into a pillow pal, because when I saw in stores, ones that they were selling for kids, they were basically pillow pals that could close back up. So look at that, I just made my own. And like I said, I picked this up at the thrift store and it was $3. So add my 10 to that three, you get 13, because I can math. And that's almost $20 less than the one that I saw at the store. So another win. And you saw the basic super flat one that I already made with the Sailor Moon cover, so we'll skip that and then we'll end off with a ladybug. Okay guys, that is it. The end of the lap pads. And I've actually made a few today. Ladybug, B, Sailor Moon thin one, sequined one. See, that's four. I'm lap padded out, except this fluffy bee because it's, <laughs> it's really cute and it's keeping me so calm. Notice how I'm less jittery? Because that's exactly how that works. No. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and that it ended up being something that was actually a new idea or concept. What am I doing? I don't know. But I would hate to say that I invented something if it already existed somewhere. Although, to be honest, I haven't seen this idea yet out there. So as far as I'm concerned, that literally means nothing. <laughs> Anyways, if you know somebody who would enjoy this tutorial, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below everything you liked or didn't like, and if you choose to make one yourself, what you might change or how you would present it. Or, 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 even more ors, if you choose to make a blanket, because I still haven't and I really need to see if it works, and you have an Instagram, then please share pictures, because I'd like to know if it works, obviously. Just, you gotta, you gotta tag me. I'm moving my hands around a lot. Maybe it's because my legs are so calm. <laughs> Anyways. Ow, <laughs> my neck just cracked. I need a weighted lap pad for my neck. Next craft. <laughs> As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.